Hi everybody, thanks for tuning in. In this uh, video, I'm just going to try to show some examples of super macro underwater photography that I took on a recent trip to Limbe, Indonesia, just to show what you can do with super macro and why I think it's so cool. One thing is you can photograph, obviously, the very small subject. So here, uh, my dive buddy took a picture of me with my setup, a 105 millimeter macro lens with a plus 10 wet diopter over it, which you can see there in a single strobe and a focus light. And that the black arrow is pointing to a very tiny squid or cuttlefish. So here's the image I got with that setup. This very tiny subject, you can see exquisite detail in it. Uh, the background is dark. I used a very quick shutter speed and with the strobe illuminating the subject, we can render a dark background like that. Uh, here's a scar stargazer taken. I love stargazers. And here's a picture that my dive buddy took of me taking a picture of a stargazer with a similar setup and a plus 10 wet subsea diopter um, wet lens, close-up lens. And of course, we can get a picture of the eye. But with a super macro setup, we can get tremendous detail of the iris, a portion of the eye of the stargazer. Just a really beautiful um, image, I think. And the teeth of a stargazer, some of the teeth. Uh, here's a crocodile fish, which I love, and they have the coolest eyes. And with a super macro setup, we can see the beautiful dorsal operculum kind of coming down like a, a sunshade over the eye. And then the beautiful light blue corneal iridescence, which is over the darker pupil. A very colorful and beautiful picture, in my opinion. Uh, this is a regular macro image of a peacock mantis shrimp uh, with eggs. But then we flip our 10 diopter close-up lens over it and we can get exquisite detail of the eggs of the mantis shrimp. Here's an image showing the eggs of a flamboyant cuttlefish that our dive guide found. Uh, there's a gastropod in the upper left hand corner of the image. But with a super macro setup we can see a lot of detail of the embryo of the flamboyant cuttlefish. I love that image. Similarly if you look at the top, you can see uh, two eyes. This is actually a blue ring octopus. And the lower left of the image, those are eggs of the blue ring octopus. Now with a super macro setup, I was able to get lucky and got a stunningly clear, sharp image of one of the eggs of a blue ring octopus. And you can even see decent detail in the eye of this embryo. So we can see things in the computer when we get back to the hotel that we didn't even see with our own eye. Here's a fish, a small fish, and I got close to it, trying to get a close-up of the eye. And then you can see there's a little isopod-like organism above the eye that I didn't even realize when I was trying to get a picture of the eye of this um, smaller fish. Um, we took a relatively mundane subject, like a file fish, and I got real close to it with a super macro setup. And I was able to get a close-up uh, detail of the skin or scales of this fish to make sort of an abstract shot. So we can do this with super macro as well. Now, with backscatter and poor visibility, uh, I was able to approach the uh, cuttlefish pretty closely and got a really nice picture of its eye. Uh, we're so close to the image that there is so little water column, we don't really have to worry too much about backscatter and poor visibility, unlike a lot of other underwater photography. Here's kind of a distracting background. If you look up at the top, there's a beautiful orange shrimp on the top of that purple uh, angled coral protruding from the uh, sand on the mucky bottom. Uh, but I don't like the conflicting background with a standard macro, but with a super macro setup, uh, the background is blurred. There's such little depth of field that when we get close to the subject, the background's blurred and the, the, um, the shrimp kind of stands and pops out. Much cooler picture, in, in my opinion. Here's another a type of scorpion fish, but kind of a distracting background. But I can get right up to the eye and kind of fill the frame with the subject, and I don't even have a background. I don't have to worry about having a distracting background. Another plus for super macro. And again, I love that modified dorsal operculum. You can see on the right the edge of the crystalline lens and the notched pupil, the apex space. Cool shot. Here's a mantis shrimp, again with a distracting background, but again with super macro we have such little depth of field I can get in real close and get um, a portion of the eye of this beautiful animal and uh, the background is uh, virtually eliminated. It's non-distracting and the eye kind of pops out at us. 
Here's an ultra super macro shot with a 1.4x teleconverter and a plus a 10 wet lens, just showing exquisite detail the individual omotidia of this uh, of a portion of this mantis shrimp eye. So thanks so much for tuning in. I hope you found this helpful, and I'd appreciate any of your comments. Don't forget to check out my website and download a copy of this outline for free on super macro photography at my website, theaquaticeye.com. I'd appreciate any feedback. Thanks.